It was a long process why I chose to come to the U.S. I was very unhappy back in Saudi. I was living a double life. I was lying to my family. I was lying to everybody around me. I didn't like wearing the hijab every day. It really bothered me that I wasn't going to be able to be myself. And so I left and I honestly don't regret it. So my journey leaving religion started when I was around high school. It was the year I decided, you know what, I'm gonna be more religious. I'm gonna read the Quran from start to finish and this time I'm gonna read it and I'm gonna look really deeply in it. So this time around when I was reading it, I reached the chapter of the book, which is uh, called Surat Nisa, which means women. And then you reach the area or the, the verse that speaks about how the men are the rulers of women, then goes on to discuss what to do when your wife is disobedient. But the contrast was huge, whereas a disobedient wife is disciplined using you know different methods. A disobedient husband is not disciplined at all. If, if anything, the woman gives up part of her rights so her husband goes back to her. I was very troubled by this, so I went to my mother and I asked her about it, and I asked her why there's a difference. And her answer to me was, because when a woman becomes disobedient, then the whole society crumbles. The hijab to me represents everything that I couldn't do when I was a kid. I was nine years old, I wasn't able to wear you know, dresses and shorts, I wasn't able to ride a bike outside with my friends, the boys of course. I wasn't able to go into the water and swim with my brothers and my, you know, the other kids. To me, it really does represent everything that I wasn't able to do when I was a kid. I don't think it's empowering. To some people, I guess, when they choose to wear it and they feel like the whole world is against them or the whole world is telling them that this thing is oppressive, but they don't think it's oppressive because they chose to wear it. But they're also completely disregarding other people like me, like many in the Muslim world in Saudi Arabia and Iran, and, and not just those countries, people here in the US and Canada that have very religious families that tell their children, you know, you're, you won't be my daughter anymore if you take off your hijab or you're not welcome in my home. I never thought it was empowering. It's been really bothering me that the left has been looking at the hijab as a freedom of choice because to me the hijab is the complete opposite of freedom of choice because it's a clear-cut requirement for muslim women that you have to wear the hijab in order for you to be you know, the most modest most pious and in order for you to go to heaven i was taught that if i don't wear the hijab then i will be held from my hair in hell so the way i see it when Women are brought up in a religion, uh, a very misogynistic religion, um, like Islam, for example, where they are taught you know, to cover up when they're young, uh, and they're given half of what their male counterparts get in inheritance, and that affects them in realizing what their worth is. And I've seen that in women in my community that have become, for example, second wives. And they just thought, you know, this is what religion is. I mean, this is what God gave my husband. It is his right. And it bothers them, but they also feel that this is an obligation to accept it because it is a given right to men in Islam to marry up to four wives, and she can't tell him that he can't do it. I've been very happy. I was able to find someone that I love and who's been very, very supportive of me. And, um, I've been able to create a life for myself, be completely independent, and most importantly, be myself.